Greetings, pen pals. I have a new pen here from Moon Man. Well, it's not a new pen. It's a new pen to me. The pen's been out for a while. This is the Moon Man M800. And yes, before you say anything, it is basically a clone of a pen from Leonardo, a very expensive pen called the Memento Zero. So yes, it is definitely a clone slash knockoff of that pen. Let's just get that out of the way right there. And uh, But let's review this pen on its own merits. This is a pretty nice pen. It comes in a couple of different colors. This is this really, really beautiful amber finish, which I really think is just uh, just beautiful looking. Um, did a really nice job on the finish. Um, it's a pen that weighs 25 grams. It's not a particularly huge pen. Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan size-wise. So you can see it's pretty much in line with these pens. Although, as you can see, it is a bit girthier at its peak. This pen has a pretty severe taper to it. So it gets bigger towards the midsection where the cap meets the barrel and then it tapers off. But in this middle section, it is decently uh, decently girthy. Can we compare it to some other Moon Man pens, you ask? That we can do. Okay, here we go. So this is our Moon Man uh, M800 uh, that we're talking about today. This is a Moon Man M8, which um, I have a review video up uh, up. Uh, as well. You could definitely uh, check that one out. This is a uh, Moon Man M300. Also have a review on that that I did quite a while back. And then this is an M Man M600S. So you can see size-wise it is fairly well aligned with these pens, although obviously the style is um, is, uh, is is somewhat, uh, is some, somewhat different, but not radically, radically so. This pen has a uh, really nice sort of double cap band that meets a matching band uh, on the top of the where the barrel and the section meet. So you kind of get almost this like triple band effect, which actually looks looks pretty darn nice if you ask me. The clip is a really really nice clip. Again, much like the Leonardo, it has this sort of roller style um, uh, uh, effect going on, uh, which again, looks really nice. And it's actually quite effective. The thing slides in and out of pockets or shirt plackets actually quite nicely. The finials on the um, end of the barrel and on the top of the cap are uh, complement each other and are styled somewhat. Similarly, the clip terminates in a clip band at the top of the cap. It is a um, it is a screw to uncap pen. It takes one and a quarter turns to unscrew and it does post and it posts solidly, etc., and doesn't particularly back weight. I personally think this is too short to use on poster, but again, that's just me. I'm a real diehard poster. Your mileage may vary, um, but it is quite comfortable in the hand to hold, etc. The section, there is a step down here and there are some threads here. Neither of them pose a particular problem. You have that trim ring that we talked about earlier. You have another trim ring here, which again, just looks really super and really nice. And the section is made of the same material as the rest of the barrel and the cap, which is always quite welcome. Um, in terms of the nib, it is a steel number six size gold tone Moon Man nib with the sort of mountain uh, effect, very much like a Monteverde does, has the Moon Man logo, a little F in a circle for fine, and a crescent shaped breather hole, which looks pretty smart. Um, it also has an uninspiring plastic uh, feed. Um, in terms of filling uh, system, as you can imagine, this is a cartridge converter pen. It comes with this uh, Moon Man branded uh, converter, which is quite nice. It even has the Moon Man branding on uh, this uh, area here. Speaking of that area here, there's all sorts of metal there. Uh, given the way this barrel is constructed, etc., you're not going to be eyedroppering this guy at all, but that's fine. It works quite effectively with the... Um, with the uh, with the converter, um, uh, the thing about this pen, like I said, is it's 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 styled very nicely. Obviously, like a very high end Italian pen, so this is a nice way of getting some of that high end Italian styling without the pricing. If buying sort of clone pens um, doesn't uh, bother you. Um, and the other thing is the material is just super, super nice. Here we have great chatoyancy, etc. It's just really, really. Um, really nice looking uh, material and that I think is part of the real appeal of this pen. It is 
it is translucent. You can see the, um, as you can see, the uh, nib going through the cap. So that's about it for the parts and features of this really, really nice pen. But as we always say, pens were meant to write. You're probably wondering how this pen writes. I'm going to let you know right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here today is a Moon Man model M800. And this has a steel number six nib in fine. Um, okay, so here's the deal with this pen. This wrote really poorly when I first got it. It was dry. It was scratchy. Um, had way too much feedback. Um, it's okay now, but I did do smoothing on it. I basically did the same procedure that I recently did on this Moonman M8, which had a similar but not quite as bad issue with its nib. So if you want to see what I did in terms of fixing this nib, I would um, refer you to the uh, video I did fairly recently on the Moonman M8 where I go through the whole smoothing procedure on the nib. But I did smooth this nib. It did not work well out of the box. So the last few Moonman nibs I have gotten have been quite disappointing. So I'm kind of down on Moonman nibs these days, I will say that. However, the pen itself is styled pretty well. It's not a problem that's not fixable, but if you're, if you're, um, if you're in any way uh, not inclined to do your own nib work, you may want to have second thoughts about getting a Moonman nib. A lot of vendors sell this Moonman pens with other nibs in it. Matter of fact, I recently got a Moonman T2 that had a Jin Hao nib in it. Um, you might want to consider that or consider replacing the nib when you get it. It's a number six standard nib. It's highly swappable. It's something you might want to just uh, consider. Um, but this was not a good nib out of the box. The other issue I have is, and this is really more of a personal preference, I just think these, these fine Moonman nibs are a bit too fine for my taste. So they're a bit, bit too fine for me. Speaking of fine, though, you know it really would be fine if all you kind people would like, share, comment, and subscribe. That would just be a fine and dandy thing to do and would be much, much appreciated. But anyway, that's pretty much the deal with this pen and this Moonman nib. Not, not a great experience out of the box uh, with the nib itself. But again, it's a super stylish pen. Nothing that's not fixable. The nib could always be swapped, etc. cetera. So um, keep that, uh, just keep that in mind. I, like I said, I haven't had a lot of great luck lately with a Moonman nibs. Anyway, that's about all I have to say about this particular pen at this particular time. But let's talk about this ink now for a minute. Okay, this is another great ink from Colorverse. So this is Colorverse. Coffee Break. And this is uh, Coffee Brown, basically. Now, Colorverse inks typically come in sets, either like sets of four, really special edition sets of six or five. Most commonly they come in sets of two, a large bottle and a small bottle. There is certain Colorverse inks that come in certain series, and this particular one is called the Joy in the Ordinary series. Now this series, instead of a large bottle and a small bottle, you get one medium bottle. So this is the sort of minority of Colorverse inks that come in a single bottle by themselves. In this case, it's a 30 milliliter bottle. So instead of a big bottle and a small bottle, you get a very nice medium sized 30 milliliter bottle. But I have to say, in terms of packaging and just presentation and, and all that, Colorverse uh, continual, continuously seems to, to please me. I think they do a really, really nice job. None of their inks are cheap. These are definitely higher end uh, inks. 
but um, but they are really super super nice. I've been really pleased with them, and um, they continue to keep coming out with new inks, new colors, etc. So I've been really really happy with Colorverse the inks uh, since they've been around. So really really nice job. Um, in terms of this ink, again a really really pretty coffee brown. Looks all, reminds me a lot of. Uh, uh, SBRE brown, which might be my favorite brown ink, that slightly leans more towards, I'm going to be really picky now, that one leans a little more towards chocolate than coffee. This one definitely is more evocative of coffee, so I think they did a good job with the naming of this, but um, again, nice, nice, um, nice ink from uh, from uh, Colorverse, basic brown, but looks really, really nice. That's what it looks like on this Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. Okay, as we said, this is Colorverse. Coffee break. And it's part of what they call the Joy in the Ordinary series. Joy in the Ordinary, and um, this is on Tomoe River paper. And again, very, very nice. Not a ton of special effects here, maybe a tiny bit of shading, etc., and so forth, but again, a really, really nice, uh, nice looking ink that presents itself really well. And uh, I'm really happy with it. And it's nice that you could buy just the bottle by itself. You don't have to invest in a whole set, unlike a lot of other Colorverse inks. So I think that'll just about do it for today's video. I sure hope you enjoyed watching it, because I know I certainly enjoyed making it. As always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.